this is starting to get out of hand here. You know, YouTube can be a great tool to share tutorials about how to do something, share life experiences, and even a tool for those who call themselves life coaches that have something actually good to say to help build up a community, right? But <laughs> you have some people that are hell-bent on further exasperating this divide between the sexes here, particularly amongst the African-American. Now, I want you guys to watch this video, and then I'm going to come back and give my commentary on it. I'm not going to be very long. I saw this video on a popular YouTuber's channel. I couldn't find the originals. I'm going to play a little piece of it, and then I'm going to give a spill on it. Hey, we need to go outside and talk. Okay, why Come you on. sounding like that? Come on. I want to ask you that work. What, are, what is going on? How dare you put that on Instagram? Audacity to comment under a post and agree with cheating on your husband for $100,000? I care about you in this relationship. How you care about me and you coming up to my job and I can lose my job because you, you up here with this stupid foolishness? Stupid foolishness now? Yes, it is. So you would cheat on your husband for $100,000. Make it make sense. Would you do it? Heck no, because I love you and only Boy, you. Boy, it don't matter. It's not that big of a deal. You should not be coming to my job. It's not no big deal. Because of this. This is Y'all see her. Boy, this is some bull crap do right here. Do y'all see him? Do y'all see him? This is ridiculous. You need to man up. You ain't got no money. You don't have no job. You don't have $100,000. So what does that mean? Oh, this time that you're spending up here, you should be somewhere trying to find a job and be a man. You about to get married. Supposedly. Okay, you heard that, you saw that. Now, obviously, that was a skit, okay? Now, because of copyright issues, I couldn't play the whole thing, but I'm going to leave a link to the guy's channel. And like I said, obviously, that's a skit. And what's sad about it isn't the scenario. What's sad about it is that we are now capitalizing off of people that are actually having some real relationship trauma. They're actually trying to capitalize and make money on the dysfunction in the African-American community, particularly with relationships. This reminds me of several talk shows from the late 80s and 90s. A lot of you probably remember the Jerry Springer show, right? And um, during that time, you had Oprah Renfrey was starting to venture into other things. You had Donahue, had Montel, you had Ricky Lake. And you had all these talk shows. That was the big thing. They had various content talking about various things, and Oprah was the queen of it all. Donahue was the OG. Back then, people just watched these shows, but then there was one incident on the Jerry Springer show that kind of catapulted him to, like, stardom. Okay, Jerry Springer started out being an ordinary talk show, talking about real things. It wasn't as popular as the others, but he still had a good thing going. But one day he had this episode, I guess it was called, I, I can't remember exactly, but it was along the lines of, you're not the father. But it was talking about relationships. It wasn't labeled, you're not the father. But anyhow, it had this couple had a dispute. The guy was cheating with the woman, a different woman, and they happened to be black. <laughs> now, it was I don't think it was staged this first episode. It was kind of like an accident because what went down surprised everybody. Okay, so they were given their spill, talking about their relationship. They come out with the paternity test and paternity test says that that guy was the father of the baby. And man, the one of the women, I think it was his girlfriend, bolted out of her chair and went at that woman like a pit bull. And the crowd was mortified. Jerry Springer was mortified. They actually had the security come up there to break them up because they weren't expecting that. So at that moment, that episode got so many ratings. So what did he start doing? He started having more shows like that. Now, other people in that space really didn't go down that road. They kind of looked down on that. They didn't want that foolishness on their show. 
But something happened. His show was catapulted to the top. It got so bad towards the end or the highlight of his show or his talk show to where the demographic switched from this moderately mixed audience to what I call a gladiator arena. And the stuff started becoming so choreographed. I mean, even Stevie Wonder could have saw it. They would have the same type of stuff the same type of themes. You're not the father. Why are you cheating on me? And he will always have people of low economic advantage on there. And the crowd would kind of like know when they're getting ready to reveal that you're not the father or you've been cheating or you've been caught or whatever. They'll be yelling, fight, 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 fight. It was just absolutely bananas. You would think that they would have canceled that show because it was distasteful, but they kept it on. Why? Because it got a lot of ratings. So much so that even respectable talk shows started turning to some of those tactics. So what am I trying to say? It seems like black YouTube is starting to turn like a Jerry Springer show. They're using skits to further exasperate a touchy issue in our community to get views. Now, I don't know how many views that original video got, but there are some people that don't know how to separate fact from fiction. You got some people that are so bitter out there, men and women, they will view it as fact or they may say, yes, yeah, a skip but that happens. But I could tell you that the vast majority of men and women are not like that. The vast majority of black men and women are not like that. Sure, we have some situations and some dysfunctions in our community, but that does not represent the whole. And it's just sad that we are turning to tactics like these to get views legitimate influencers and so-called relationship coaches aren't doing this. I don't consider myself a relationship coach or life coach. I don't do that. I just share my experiences that I've had with my family in hopes that someone gets some nuggets off of my stories because I know that not everyone's the same. And I refuse to to use sensationalism and false narratives to further exasperate situations that we have in our community. It's kind of like the black exploitation movies of the 70s, right? That's what it's turning into. I know it sounds crazy. You know, some of you may be laughing, but think about it. All I'm saying is, look, there are some hurting people out there that have some real issues. And what we don't need... <laughs> is stuff like that. And some people may say, man, it's just entertainment. To some people, it's not entertainment. But anyhow, I'm going to get up on out of here and um, I see you on the next one.